Welcome back to the foundry, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> to ye old foundry. I keep forgetting about that. All right, today what we're going to do is we're going to degrease and acid treat the cable that we have here. Okay? What I've done ahead of time is in this one bucket. I hope you're able to see it down below you. This one bucket right there. I've already got the bicarbonate of soda uh, mixed in with the water to neutralize the acid on both the cables and to eventually neutralize the acid that I'm going to have in this glass container. Now, anytime you use acid, you can't just put it in any old container because, I mean, well, you can put it in a, in a, in a steel bucket if you want, but if you want to have that steel bucket for many years, you, you probably shouldn't, uh, you know, put uh, acid in a steel bucket, okay? No, almost any kind of acid, really. And anybody out there that's a uh, chemist major or a chemist, period, a chemical person, um, chemical scientist, whatever the case may be, you're free to totally con uh, uh, contradict me if you want to. But what I'm doing is I'm doing it the way we did it in the foundry, or did it, meaning making, pre preparing the, um, the liquids and the acids and the degreasers, you know, getting that prepared the way we did it back then. Now, safety is number one in this trade no matter what, okay? Whether you're working with the sand, whether you're working with molten metal, or in this case, working with caustic chemicals, you always want to have your safety gear on. Now, the thing that were absolutely required uh, when working with the, uh, the chemicals and stuff in the foundry is that you had to have a rubber apron, you had to have rubber gloves, and you had to have a face shield, okay? So I got all those gathered up. Now, the first thing you do when you're doing this process is that you're going to, you're going to degrease the ends of the cables. Uh, to, because, as I, I'm sure I've mentioned before, this has got grease in, in between all these pieces of wire to keep the uh, pieces of wire from rubbing against each other and prematurely failing because of the uh, you know, rubbing away material, making these uh, pieces of metal smaller and smaller as they rub okay you can't have any oils or greases on these pieces of metal and expect the zinc to bond with the metal okay it's gonna it's gonna act as a barrier and while the uh, zinc does form around the individual pieces of wire in, in a strong fashion like you gripping okay it's the difference between you holding on to a piece of, uh, of rod and some strong person pulling the rod out of your hand. You're going to resist for a while, but eventually that rod's going to be pulled out of your hand because, you know, eventually it's going to work its way loose, okay? The difference here is, is that if you don't have it on there, uh, the grease on the, those different individual wires, those wires... Well, it's going to be as if I had that same rod, I had that same hand, but in this case, I put super glue all over my hand. Boom. Okay? No matter how hard that guy is going to pull and pull and pull, uh, he's not going to pull it out of my hand once that super glue sets. Okay? Same thing for that if you prep it correctly. All right? So, right now, I've got to prep these hose clamps first. Okay? I don't want any grease and oils to be uh, put on, uh, you know, that once I've cleaned it, okay? This bucket right here is the bucket I'm going to use to not only clean the ends of these wires, but also to uh, clean anything that's going to possibly come in contact with these wires, okay? In this case, it's just going to be the, uh, the hose clamps. Now, what we used to do is, I mean, because this is the hard part, 
Where'd it go? They're over there. Be right back. The hard part about this entire job is to try, after you broom those out, is to try and bring them back together to put go, go through this tiny little hole. People have invented many, many things throughout the, uh, the eons that this process has existed. But what we did in the foundry first, before I, I decided on a better thing, is that somebody would pull that together. We would get some of the seizing wire, put a turn around it, tighten it up, and keep tightening the seizing wire until that drew that into a small compact mass, small enough to go inside this hole in the in the socket. Okay, that was a, that was one process or one procedure that you could use to do that, and many times it worked. Didn't often work uh, good enough, so we had to think of other things. All right, what we thought of is that we were, uh, once these were cleaned and it was time to bring those together, cleaned and acid, acid etched, once it was time to bring those, those um, pieces of wire back together to put in, in the socket, we decided, or I, I, I thought of, somebody else may have decided, anyway, we used hose clamps, okay? We used a big hose clamp to draw the mass together as tight as we could, then we put a smaller hose clamp on top of the big hose clamp to draw it in even farther. Okay? Don't forget, you can't put it at the very end. Can't put the hose clamp at the very end of these because you've got to have enough of that free to be able to wiggle this on. Okay? So, I've already made the bicarbonate soda uh, wash to neutralize the acids. I've got my glass container. You can use glass or rubber containers and you can feel uh, you know relative, relatively uh, sure that you're not going to hurt your uh, your containers by having the acid inside here. Okay. Uh, so let's see if this has got a a seal yes it does have a seal let's before we always even if you're just mess, messing with this the uh, the uh, degreaser it's not as bad as acid but if you get this in your eye it's going to harm your eye and anywhere on your skin it's going to be a pain kind of you know here's the here's the here's the deal every bit of your skin is flexible and it's not flexible because it's just skin. It's flexible because part of your skin has oils and, uh, you know, the, the fibers on your skin. That, that's got oils on the outside. Anybody who, who don't think you got oils on your skin, just talk to a fingerprint expert. It's the oil on your fingers that, they, that puts the uh, mark on whatever you touch and leaves that... that uh, pattern that your thumbprint or your fingerprints uh, leave behind. It's the oil in your skin that lets your skin be flexible. You get any of this on you, uh, you know, if you just have a, have a, have a real fast uh, contact with you, no big deal because it's not going to be on there long enough for it to be bad. But if, don't forget, this is a degreaser. It breaks down grease. You get it on your skin for any length of time, it starts breaking down the grease or oils on your skin, and your skin can can become a lot less uh, pliable. And you you might find out uh, you might wind up seeing that your your skin is starting to split. Okay, I don't mean split like go all the way around and your skin falls off or anything like that, but so wherever it is that you put it on you or you get it on you the uh, your skin is going to, you know, be less flexible and it'll, it might tear apart a little bit, which is number one, painful. Number two, not good for the inside of your, your muscles here because the germs are suddenly getting past all this barrier that this is protecting you and you might get an infection. So 
don't, even if it's just degreaser, don't get it on you any more than you ever have to. Acid, on the other hand, much more dangerous because it actually burns you. No matter, you know, where you get it on you, it's an actual chemical burn. Uh, it's like somebody taking a cigarette, uh, uh, the cigarette butt, and putting it into your skin. It'll burn you like that, okay? So that means it hurts. So that means it damages you. So always wear your, uh, your safety gear. this off of here give myself some kind of pouring capability this is uh, it's not a metal it's not a metal covering this it's more like a thin plastic covering and yeah it's plastic it's, it's kind of stupid uh, Oh, it's glued on. It's just for your safety. And if you can get it off, where the heck is my? Let me really try this. I want to get this most of the way off, if for no other reason than just to allow myself the capability of pouring it smoothly, not bouncing all around and splashing here and there. Okay. Now you don't need to have the whole container poured out into here. All you need to do is have this immersed into this up to the seizing, okay? Past that, you really don't want that because you don't want to damage the cape, the, the uh, oil saving the rest of the cable. Now that didn't splash at all. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm putting my, I'm rinsing my uh, hose clamps off so that I can use these later when this metal is ready to be drawn together and it's nice and clean. Okay. Yeah, there's a. They're clean now. Now I'm making absolutely sure that I get these these cleaned off because I'm not, you know, I wouldn't be so worried about my own self if I had a cape or, or a need or a capability of using this cable, like with a, a, a little crane, because I would know certainly would know not to be anywhere near whatever it is that's being picked up while it's being picked up. These could be brand new. The glinting cable could be brand new, could be a hundred years old. They, 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 unless they're tagged with a metal tag telling you the, uh, the weight test date, you're not gonna know. So you're not gonna be 100% certain what the status is on these wires or even inside this inside the uh, zinc okay all right so now i'm going to clean these ends uh it's fairly relatively uh certain when you look at it that you got it clean okay because right now everything's kind of darkish from the uh the oils being you know oil and grease being on the uh the wire but once you clean it out, you have two things. Number one, these will become 
quite silverish, a lot cleaner, and the and the uh, degreaser that you're using will become quite a bit uh, dirtier. Okay, piece of cake. So let's get a closer look for uh, compare and contrast. You can probably see, I hope how uh, darkish those wire stra uh, the strands are. Yep, looks cleaner. As you can probably see, compared to uh, that. I think I'm gonna add some more to the depth of this. I'm not exactly gonna be making a million of these, and I don't often use a degreaser. Plus, they said that this you can uh, you can throw this stuff away in in the uh, drain if you want to because this is biodegradable. This stuff. Well, we used to use. Uh, well, we've started off. Now I get I get the two mixed up because they're so close together. The names. One of them was trichloroethane. One was trichloroethylene. Can't remember which one I started off with. I'm kind of thinking it's trichloroethane. Uh, it was on the uh, the cans that we used. They were very strong. You really, I mean, very very potent uh, degreasers. And it turns out that trichloroethane. Let's say it's trichloroethane is what we used in the beginning. Uh, turned out those were cancer causing agents. Luckily, I haven't gotten any cancer from using them. Plus, the Navy was pretty tight when it came to uh, having to uh, wear all, you know, your safety gear and having the vents on, okay? These degreasers, this one, I got it uh, for two, two things. Number one, I don't have access to a uh, hazardous waste disposal area, okay? So I got something that was biodegradable, right? Number two... Uh, this this degreaser leaves no film if you believe the advertisements this leaves no film so once you degrease it real good and it dries it's not going to leave a, a, a white film or any kind of film on your metal to act as a barrier for uh, the acid and uh, to treat so I'm going to wash this a little more cleaner I wasn't too you know happy with that last first cleaning but as you can see that the, the uh, wires are, are brighter now 
and have less stuff on them. Okay, now I'll get the other end done. Anyway, as I was saying before, uh, trichloroethane is what we used first. They found out that that was a cancer causing agent. Then they went to trichloroethylene. Now, I don't know, it was still a good degreaser and what we used all the way up to 91 when I retired. I don't know if, if that was found to be a, a bad thing also. And they went to another uh, degreaser, but I didn't want to take any chances. So I got something that was supposed to be, uh, you know, good for this project not only worked all the grease and oils off of it but also uh you know wouldn't leave a film the trichloroethane and trichloroethylene was pure clear i mean and there was no color this has a kind of a greenish appearance to the liquid but the trichloroethane and trichloroethylene left no film also okay touch nothing else. Well, it won't be. The end, I'm just going to make sure nobody, it doesn't move anywhere. Okay, now I get this degreaser out of the way. The degreaser has a foam on top right now, but yeah, it's dark. Yeah, it's dirty. I'll let that, the foam, go away first. All right, now we're going to work with the acid, okay? I don't think this is, no, there ain't nothing on here. We're going to work with the acid. Now, here's the deal. You got to remember this. I said it before, and I'll say it again. You have the water in there first. You add the water, uh, add the acid to the water. You don't put the acid in there first and add the acid I mean, to add the water to the acid. That will react violently and spit all over the place, possibly getting on, getting on you, anybody else that might need to be near around, or anything on any of your equipment that you certainly don't want to have a fall apart because acid got on it, okay? It's a dangerous thing to do it that way. You can't put water into acid. Acid into water only, okay? Okay, I've previously measured, you can probably see a mark right here. That, from the bottom to that mark, is three quarters the length of these wires, okay? No further up do you want to get, and I believe I, I said why before, but we want no more uh, we want no acid to go up into the main body, right? Because you can't tell it'll be it'll be eating the uh, body from the inside out. You won't be able to tell until it fails and possibly crushes somebody. Uh, so only three quarters way up the wires, okay? Your acid and water mixture is 50-50. Before I do that, let me make a little mark on here to tell myself where 50-50 is. Okay. Now, if you want to be a lot more precise about it, you make your mark, like for instance, if you did it exact this way, You've got a, a jar made out of glass, can't be affected by the acid. You make your mark where it is 
three quarters where you know from the bottom of the chopped off wires to the three quarter mark off the wires make that the more precise way of doing it is you fill it up to with up with water up to that mark you t you pour the water into a measuring device find out how many fluid ounces that represents and then only pour in 50% of that back into the jar then you'll have your your you know much more uh, precise measurement of 50 50 acid and water mix okay Now, another little story uh, when it comes to this. Now, I was fully decked out in gloves, the big heavy-duty heavy black chemistry gloves, a black, uh, you know, just like this, a black um, rubber apron and, and, and the, you know, face shield, right? I mixed it. Uh, and I was getting to walk it over. I was, I had uh, the rubber, the, the uh, container I had it in was an actual rubber bucket. Okay. Supposed to be good for chemical use and all that stuff. But here's the problem. When I was pouring that all together and I mixed it all together real good with my rubber gloves, that meant my gloves was wet. If you've ever tried to hold on to wet rubber and wet rubber or wet plastic well, I was a young guy, didn't even have that experience. But I picked up the rubber handle on the rubber bucket. It took about two or three steps, and that thing went right through my hand. It was slick, boom, went on to hit the ground. The, sh the stuff went and splashed up. I'm looking at it. It's, I had this down, but I looked at it, and it splashed up and up and into behind, under, under the bottom of that, and got it on my face. Okay, no good. It took the next half hour, 45 minutes, them walking me up to sick bay, stripping me down. I had to take a shower in the, in the, in, well, to get it all off. And then they did an assessment of me to make sure I was okay. I didn't even really feel it burning me. But then again, it was only a 50 50 acid mix, but still had to go through the process of uh you know decontaminating me in other words so here i have hydrochloric acid Okay, hydrochloric acid. You might or might not be able to see the fumes coming up. All right. And I can see the water, unless it's the curvature of the glass I'm looking at. I can see the water is kind of moving a little bit like there's a dense material and dense watery material in there in amongst the water. So you know it's in there. What I'm going to do is find something to stir that with. All right, here's a good thing. Can't be affected by by acid. Rubber handed, rubber handled uh, cleaner brush. And this is what I have this for. This bicarbonate of soda is here to neutralize the acid. Now you probably should either wear a, uh, a mask maybe 
to keep any of the droplets out of your lungs. Or I was thinking of having, doing this outside where we had all the air, but I've got a largish area with the plenty of, uh, you know, uh, air in here. Now here's, here's a, another safety thing, okay? Never, ever, ever take something, even if it's identified, never open it up and take a whiff. If it's acid or any other uh, caustic material, whether it be a, a, uh, a lye, a strong lye solution or a strong acid solution, if you snuff just to try and get a smell, that stuff is going directly into your, into your nostrils. If you take a direct uh, hit off of this, you're going to burn the heck out of yourself. You're going to be in agony for about an hour, maybe even longer. The thing you do to try and test a smell on something that's possibly, you know, just do it this way all the time, whether it's water in there or not. You take and open it, and you just whiffed some of the fumes towards you. That way, if they're very bad, you can brush it and get it out of your way, okay? Do not just take a sniff out of, out of, out of a container, especially if it's got a chemical in it. It can totally mess up your day. All right, so these are gonna be dipped into this container. I'm gonna put that on the ground. Okay, be smart guy. Put that on the ground. Be my luck if I took that and put it in there and a wire grabbed it and totally splashed it and I'd, I'd have to, I mean, it might even get on the camera so it'd be rotten. Okay. In the the, op, the uh, procedure in the book does not say how long to dip this. It does say don't go up more than three quarters of the way up. It does not say how long to keep this immersed for the uh, acid treating, okay? Now, I may or may not have said it, but the reason why we're doing that, the acid treating, is that we're allowing the acid to eat away the first layer, you know, just molecular, molecular thickness layer of the, of the metal so that any oxides that may have formed on this metal will be, will be gone, okay? We want totally clean and bare metal, no oxides to act as a barrier against the uh, zinc, okay? I am going to have to work with something else. I'm not feeling really uh, feel, feeling very confident about trying to get it into that hole. So we will put it in this plastic bucket and just make certain. that we don't go any deeper than three quarters.
once you dip it, immediately put it in this bicarbonate soda. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I hope this doesn't drown out the video. But I am going to open up the, the, uh, the door. Okay. Now the, uh, the fumes are starting to act up. All right. All the uh, instructions said on this is that you leave it in there long enough for the metal to be cleaned. Well, with all the different types of metals that we have, the uh, I imagine that's probably the smarter way to do it. Because if you you know did it in carbon steel, it might take five minutes or one minute to work properly, but on stainless it might take five minutes. Okay, now I'm going to get you and let you watch. You see how, I, how it bubbled right there? That was this bicarbonate of soda neutralizing the acid. Okay. Now that's the reason why I did it immediately after doing the one, immediately did that. Because if I was to go ahead and do that and then do this, what's happening here? I'd have uh, drops of a hydrochloric acid water mix going down into the this and uh, totally screwing up everything. You gotta you gotta think ahead when you do this stuff, especially when it comes to stain uh, to safety gear. <clears throat> okay, that's ready to be put into uh, the socket. Now that's acid, not very much of it, and I made plenty of of the hydrochloric, or rather the bicarbonate and soda mixture. And I'm going to neutralize this acid by pouring it in the mixture a little at a time, and you'll see how how important it is. To neutralize it. Now I don't know if you can see that black stuff on top of the uh, bubbles. That's the oxides I just ate off of this cable. They're floating. Okay, so the vast majority of the liquid has been neutralized. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now pour that into these containers and let the containers be put safe. Let me put you back over here where I can use both hands. Okay, now that's the prepping of the ends of the cable. Notice I didn't get hurt because I was wearing all my safety gear. Um, 
The mistake I did make though is that I didn't have that that open the door open in the very beginning of it thinking that I had plenty of air in here. If you can smell the acid uh, that's too much acid you're inhaling okay so don't do that any don't do what I just did by uh, taking a chance okay so now I'm going to turn off the uh, the camera and dispose of the used chemicals in a proper fashion please make sure you don't just dump this stuff in nature if you don't know how to get rid of it uh, get in touch with your local EPA hazardous waste people because there's always going to be some people in your local government that has the knowledge of where to properly put this stuff once you're done okay uh, once you learn the one time where it has to go that's it forever you know unless they change their policies you'll know from how to proceed from that point on okay but don't just dump it out in the grass or in the the gutter okay you don't want any of this stuff certainly to get in down into your aquifer but you don't want this stuff to go over to the lift stations where your 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 uh, you know your has your waste products are going see there's somebody when I was on the Mayport base there was a, a problem came up where one of the ships dumped some uh, hazardous waste in their toilet or their drain system and all of that stuff goes to the to the uh, waste reclamation uh, plant on the base they put some uh, they put the, apparently the wrong stuff in there because the bike uh, the uh, bacteria that is so necessary to break down human waste was killed and so you know that stuff wasn't being processed anymore it was just sitting in a great big million gallon container stinking up the world they had to make an emergency dump into uh, big trucks and they had to take the trucks away to a place where that could that problem could be uh, you know reworked so please don't dump any of this stuff anywhere that and out in nature or down your drains or in your toilet or any of that stuff okay so until next time once I get this all done it should be time for me to uh, put the sockets on maybe even to uh, prep it all the way all right Be careful out there be safe if you enjoy this this series of uh, or any of these stuff that I'm doing online uh, press like if you don't like it you can press dislike or whatever it was and I think it's dislike and uh, but do us do us the courtesy or do me the courtesy I, I was using the royal we wasn't it do me the courtesy of uh, telling me what you believe I'm doing wrong and if that can be fixed, I will. Okay? So, Liberty Call. And Bill, get the trash out before you go. <laughs>